is my microphone playing up again or is that okay no it's fine tom okay it's 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 fully white at the moment you think oh my goodness it's doing that again like last week right um a couple of minor things to kick off with um um, 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 yeah, the tutorials. I've opened the new tutorial. Um, I know there have been some issues with last week's tutorial, but until I've got to the bottom of it, I can't really. Um... Okay, Nicole can't hear me. I think that must be at your end, Nicole, I'm afraid. Uh, don't get it. Okay. I'm going to carry on, yeah, because some people can hear, so I'm going to carry on because this is recorded, so you can go and have a look at the recording later if you can't hear at the moment. But if some can hear and some can't, it's not my end, it's your end. Sorry to be so clear about that. Right, so the new tutorial for this sprint is now up, and I will um, I will look at the marks. I am in the process of looking at the marks, and if there's any feedback I need to give you on that uh, later in the week. Um, so yeah, just carry on with the sprints in the in the normal way. Um, and the other question that I'd like to ask, I don't need an answer this second, but if we arrange some um, PAL sessions on Thursday instead of Wednesday, would anybody be interested in that? If you are, send me an email, that would probably be the easiest thing. Um, I'm aware that the Wednesday PAL sessions could well conflict with people playing sports and things. Um, and if that, if you're in that category, let me know, because if you want to go to a PAL session and you play rugby, let's say, um, we, we, we need to arrange something different for it, particularly as one of the, uh, one of the PALs is a rugby player. So he'll be off playing rugby on Wednesdays, some Wednesdays anyway. Um, yeah, poor old Nicole, you've been isolated. Um, right, so on to, on to this week's material. So today we're talking about equations. Um, and as usual, I'm going to go through this quite quickly, um, just because most of you have already done this kind of thing. But I will point out some of the problems that I've experienced on the way, you know, in the tutorials. So let me get up a whiteboard and just kick off with an example. Okay, so imagine we've got an equation of the, the form 2x plus 3y minus 4 is equal to 6x minus y plus 2. All we've got here is additions and subtractions, which means that I can move terms from one side to the other, um, and that just requires a, a change in sign. What that actually means, let's imagine I want to move this 2x here to from the left-hand side to the right-hand side, effectively what I'm doing is I'm subtracting 2x from this side. So I'm putting minus 2x there. So I need to put a minus 2x on the other side as well. Um, I know it's easy to say I'm going to move that to the other side so I change the sign. But in fact, what you're doing is subtracting the same from both sides. And that's absolutely pivotal to how equations work. The equation sign is like a balance point, And whatever happens on the left must also happen on the right. So that's how it works. So basically, I'm going to move the 2x to the other side. So I'm going to end up with 3y. I'm going to move the 2x to the other side. So I've got 6x. I'll ignore the y for a second, plus 2. And then I'm going to move the 2x so it be so it's plus 2x on the left hand side so it becomes minus 2x on the right hand side and then I've got 3y there um, and then I've got minus 4 here so if I add 4 to the left hand side I need to add 4 to the right hand side and then on the right hand side I've got a minus x here so if I sorry a minus y here so I'm going to add a y to the right hand side so that will go away so I add, I add a y to the left hand side as well OK, so what's happened here? Let's just review it. We've moved 2x onto the other side, which is there. Um, I've moved minus 4 onto the other side, which is there. And I've moved minus y onto the left hand side, which is there. So having done that, I can now do a bit of simplification. 3 plus 4 is sorry, 3 plus 1 is 4. So I've got 4y on the left hand side. 6 minus 2 is 4. So I've got 4x. And then I've got 2 plus 4, so that's plus 6. OK, um, I'm going to divide both sides by 4. Right, that's an important thing. So now, let's just undo that. So now I've got 
pluses and minuses, but I want to do an operation to the left hand side, which is to divide by four. So I have to do that to the whole of the right hand side, which means that I'm going to divide that by four and I'm going to divide the whole of the right hand side by four. Do you see the point that I'm making there? This is a single term being divided by four and I'm treating the whole of the right hand side as if it was a single term. That's the important thing. So therefore we get y is equal to x plus 3 over 2. Okay, so just to review, additions and subtractions, you can move them to, from one side to the other and they change sign as they go because effectively you're subtracting a positive thing or you're adding a negative thing. But if you do an operation like multiply or divide, or indeed square roots or logs or whatever else, you have to treat the whole of the left side as a single quantity and the whole of the right side as a single quantity. Okay, so we've now got an equation that's y in terms of x. So that's probably just revision for people, but, um, but, but, yes. So let me just move my page up a bit. Let's now look at a slightly different equation. So what I was saying is imagine we've got an equation of the sort r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And what I want to know, I mean, that's just Pythagoras, we know that equation, but maybe I want an equation of y as a function of x. So what I have to do here is I need to square the left-hand side, so I'm going to get r squared, square the right-hand side, so I'm going to get x squared plus y squared. Okay, so now what I can do is to take the y onto the left, r onto the right, so I'm going to get y squared is equal to r squared minus x squared. Okay. And then when I've done that, I can take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to get y is equal to the square root of r squared minus x squared. So the point of this is that whatever you do to the left hand side, you do to the right hand side and you treat the whole of the right hand side as a single unit, not as separate pieces. Can I give you a little problem? If I've got a r squared is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared, y squared plus z squared. I write too fast and then it looks rubbish. Can you get me y as a function of x and z? 10 seconds to do that. So what I hope you've got is that y is equal to the square root of r squared minus x squared minus z squared. Okay. Do I need to go through that or are we are we comfortable with that? Let's just make that small. Comfortable. Where did the z come from? Okay, I will just quickly go through that then. So get my whiteboard back. Um, so what what's going to happen now is I'm going to square both sides. So r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So it's just Pythagoras in three dimensions, obviously. And what I want is y as a function of the other things. So I'm going to take the x squared and the z squared onto the left hand side, but then I'm going to swap them around if you see what I mean. So I'm going to get y squared is equal to r squared minus x squared minus z squared. Do you see what's happened there? I've moved the x onto that side, the z onto that side, and then I've just swapped the left and right hand sides round. So now what's going to happen is I'm going to get y is equal to the square root of r squared minus x squared minus z squared. OK, is that all right then? Yep, OK, we get, we're OK with that. So let's put that back again. Now, let me give you, let's take it to another level. So let's move that up and say, what if I've got Q is equal to the square root of P plus 2 squared minus 2 brackets, and that's all under the under the bracket there 
This time I would like to know, um, I want p equals a function of q. So what I'm looking for is p equals a function of q. Okay, can I give you a couple of minutes to do that? Right, so let's go through this then, shall we? What we've got is q is equal to this expression and I want p equals. So let's start by squaring both sides. So I'm going to get q squared is equal to p plus 2 squared minus 2. So I've squared both sides. OK. Um, now, you might be tempted to expand this bracket, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to take the minus 2 onto the other side, so I'm going to get q squared plus 2 is equal to p plus 2 all squared. But remember, it's p that I'm interested in. So if I expand this bracket, I'm going to end up with a p squared term um, and a p term and a constant term, and that's really going to make life more difficult for me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the square root of both sides so as before we treat the whole of one side as as a as a single piece so taking the square root of this side i'm going to get the square root of q squared plus two i'm taking the square root of that so i'm going to get p plus two is what i mean to say there and this is going to be plus or minus i only need plus or minus on one side it doesn't matter which side that that I put it on. But obviously it's p that I'm looking for. So now what I can say is that p is equal to minus 2 plus or minus the square root of q squared plus 2. Which is a bit of a messy expression, but that's that's going to get your answer for you. Okay, and just as one more example, can we look at log of x squared minus log of y plus 3 log of x minus 2 log of 3x equals 0. So find y as a function of x meant to be x. Okay, can I give you a couple of seconds to have a go at that? So it's log x squared minus log y plus 3 log x minus 2 log 3x equals 0. And I want y as a function of x. Okay, so the first thing I've done is to, what I've done is I've taken the minus log y on to the right hand side and then I've swapped the left and right hand sides over. So the only thing that's changed is the log y which is which has moved on to the, on to the side opposite the, the x's. Right, now, change my pen colour, remember that 3 log of anything, uh, that's meant to be x isn't it, 3 log x, 3 log x is the same as the log of whatever's in the bracket cubed. So I can take the coefficient and turn it into a power. Okay, so that's where that 3 has come from. Which means that, okay, let me just grab that little lot, move it down a bit. Come on, mouse, where are you? Let's move that down a bit so I've got a bit of space. So remembering that, I'm going to change this and this. So that is going to equal the log of x squared plus the log, oops, the log of x cubed minus the log of 3x squared. OK, now. Let me um, let me write something else. So let me just move this page up a little bit. 
just remember if I multiply a hundred times a thousand that's going to give me a hundred thousand okay nice and easy now let's do that with indices a hundred is actually ten squared times a thousand is ten cubed and that is equal to ten to the power of one two three four five okay so when you're multiplying logs because that's what these things are the indices here are logs that's what logs are so they are the logs so I'm multiplying these two quantities and I add the indices let's also think about a hundred divided by a thousand and that's going to equal 100 over 1,000 is 1 over 10, isn't it? That's just going to give me a tenth at the end. So let's look at that as indices. That's going to be 100, which is um, 10 squared, divided by 1,000, which is 10 cubed. And that's going to equal 10 to the minus 1. So when we're multiplying logs, we simply add them together because we add the indices together. And when we're dividing logs, we subtract the indices. So 2 minus 3 gives us minus 1. That's what's going on there. So that's what I'm going to do on the, on the top here. So I'll just bring that down. So we've got the problem stated again. So back to my black pen. So this is now going to equal the log of... We've got x squared, we've got plus that, so that means times x cubed, that's meant to be times, and then we've got minus, so that's going to be divide by, and this is 3x squared, which is going to give me 9x squared, isn't it? So I should have said 3x all squared, and that's 9x squared. So let me just give myself a little bit more space. So lasso this little lot yikes not that and then move all of that down these tools are great when they work Okay, tell you what, I'm going to delete it. I think that's why my cursor, there we go. That's better. So that was 9x squared. Okay, so that is going to equal. Um, x squared times x cubed is x to the 5 divided by 9x squared so the x squareds will cancel let me just do that so they cancel so that's going to equal the log of x cubed over 9 right so now we've got the log we've got the log of y is now equal to the log of x cubed over 9 so now I've got a single log term on the left hand side and a single log term on the right hand side which means I can do the inverse operation the anti-log so I can say that y is equal to x cubed over 9 that's meant to be a 9 so over 9 okay and that's the answer of that problem um, I think no nope. Yeah, I'll do one more. There's one more class of problems that I'd like to look at, and then we'll go into the breakout room. So imagine we've got the lens equation, which is 1 over the focal length is equal to 1 over the object and 1 over the image, 1 over u plus 1 over v. And if I wanted to find the object length, it, I wanted to find u in this equation. So what I'm looking for, u, as a function of the focal length and the um, image distance v. Okay, so how am I going to do that? Well, really what I want to do is to, I want 1 over u by itself. So I could write that 1 over u is equal to 1 over f minus 1 over v. 
that's a, a bit of a start but actually I want one over you, I want you not one over you so I want u is equal to and then I'm just going to flip this over so I'm going to get f minus v is that right no can't do this and the reason is I've not treated the right hand side as a single unit because at the moment it is two separate terms so bearing in mind I'll put a line through that so it's absolutely clear you can't do that what I'll do is I'll turn this into a single term so 1 over u is equal to I need a common denominator don't I so I'm going to get v minus f over fv so I've multiplied this term by v top and bottom I've multiplied this term by f top and bottom so that's v over vf and that's f over vf they're both over fv um, so that means I've now got a single term on the left and a single term on the right which means I can now invert both sides so I can now say u is equal to fv over v minus f okay and there's a whole stack of problems that fit into that sort of category right so that's the content that I want to cover with equations just to make sure that we've got all that right are there any questions about what I've done because I'm now ready to go into the breakout rooms and do some particular examples right okay um, is it FV or FU I wanted to get U in terms of um, F and V that was what the target was at the top so 1 over f equals 1 over u plus 1 over v that's an equation that you know from physics I'm sure and I wanted to get u in terms of f and v so why is it minus f and not minus v never mind okay I won't mind okay any other questions before we uh, before we break out nope okay so let's put that down let's stop sharing the screen which is there and let's look at the breakout rooms which are there so breakout groups right so we'll go for three breakout groups shall we yeah that's fine okay and shall we do Sarah, Sarah A, Sarah C, and then TD in that order for one, two, and three. Sounds good. 